Live We're going live on Instagram and on Facebook. Welcome everybody. There's Terry. Terry's doing our taping today and Angela. And I'm going to show you a little bit around the studio. And we are live today. Hey, Terry. Hey, yeah, you're going live on Instagram. I'm going to show you some work that I've been working on here. Just some new rugs that I've been making because I've been at the beach a lot. Joan Perry is watching. Terry Cantor is watching. And uh, you can see sometimes, too, on Instagram, Terry, it'll show up who's watching or what their names are if you want to tell us. Loretta Manning is watching. Hi, Loretta. And Ann Burton is watching from very hot Kingston, Ontario. We, and it's Thursday Live with Deanne Fitzpatrick. Carol Ferguson is watching. And Meta Graham is here. Welcome, Meta. Pam Maxfield. Hello, everybody. Bring you over and show you all my cloth right here. Isn't it great? Isn't that beautiful? just there I mostly hand cut it and bird from Kentucky Haley Perry my niece Haley just did a beautiful uh, tour off of Rockland where she was teaching people how to hook rugs and she was on a ship so Angela can I pass this to you and let you take over there you go awesome so what are we going to talk about today well I'm going to talk about using a lap frame to make a tiny landscape so I'm going to do some eight by eights because right now I'm really into tiny landscapes so let's go out here and have a look at what we're doing these are the ones that I've made lately not this one this one I've had for a little while which I can't understand because it's one of my favorites the blueberry fields with the hills um, but I'm waiting for six by six inch frames for these and we just I think you just posted this one today didn't you Angela I did yeah that's awesome so I'm going to do a little bit of hooking and just show you how I do those on my lap and uh, get started. Angela's got, she's picked out some wools that she thinks would be great for tiny landscapes. So I'm going to, uh, I don't know, like am I, am I allowed to have these? Is there lots of all of them? There are. Oh, that's good. Okay, I might, I might just go with this. Okay, that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to sit here, draw an eight by eight. So all you want to do this is an eight by eight template right here. So I am just going to tear that out. You want me to turn this way, don't you, Angela? I do. Yeah, because she doesn't want me against the light. I can feel it, I just <laughs> feel it right off her. All right. So our tiny landscape course is gonna be, maybe I'll go over and sit in my chair. That would be better probably. Our tiny landscape, is going to be offered um, until September 14th. You can get it and it's $100 less, uh, no, $50 less between now and September 14th. And then after, four, after the 14th of September, it's going up in price. So what are we gonna hook today? Let's see what I'm gonna show you today. I think I'll do a little landscape. See, you can do anything in these tiny landscapes. So. I'm thinking about the water a lot in Amherst Shore a lot. So I think I'll just do like cottages. No, I'm not doing that. Hmm. I'm tempted. Do a tree for you. I love it that you can play. I'm just going to do a tree. Maybe a little river. Maybe a little, just sort of the feeling of a river tree, some land, maybe a little hill. Alrighty, I'm find my hook here. Going live without the hook. Okay, Angela gets the microphone and everything ready. So let's get that tree going. And what are these, what are these wools you have here, Angela? You got a list of them, don't you? There's a sheet there. I'm just gonna grab that piece of paper so that I can explain what I'm using. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a green that is basically a green thicket. And um, thicket is is a yarn that has a little bit of like, um, it, it's a thicket pine is a little, the one I'm going to, this one is a little deeper. Um, I'm not going to bust that open because I've got another thicket here that's close. So I'm going to start with a tree and the tree is not going to be so dark. You can see that I'm just following the lines that I drew on here, really. So what kind of trees are those, Deanna? Are they pine or spruce? I would say it's like a spruce or a pine, but I'm hooking it a little bit lighter than those trees normally are. And the moon was really yellow last night. Did anyone notice the moon last night? Of course, wherever you are, it's different, I suppose. But for me, the moon was really yellow. And of course, you know that we had Iggy last week. And how was Iggy after he got home, Angela? <sighs> Iggy had a taste of stardom. Iggy did. Yeah, so now he's being a little bit more demanding. Is he? <laughs> he is. <laughs> he wants a lot of company. Yep, he's now taken over uh, Rocco's top perch on the cat stand. Is that right? Yep. That's what he's like. Oh, yes. Mm. You wouldn't expect it, really. Right? No. He seemed so calm when he was here. He's not anymore. <laughs> he's like, I'm a star now. <laughs> well, we've got, we've got, you're all going to have to take home what we made in, you know, for Iggy what we were thinking about. You're going to have to show Iggy. Actually, it would be cool to do it and put it above his house. It would be. I should, yeah, I should do that. We've made an Iggy pattern, an Iggy abstract, because I was so taken with his coloring and all that beauty. Oh, I need a pair of scissors. What did I do with those? Thank you, Terry. Was, there's just so much beauty. So there's my tree. Now I'm going to fill that in a little bit. But it doesn't hardly look like a tree now, but when I hook around it, it will start to look a lot like a tree. Now this is our recycled yarn. So this one here is called, it's a recycled yarn, dark clove, is that Angela, or dark cloves? Yes. Dark cloves. And I'm going to open this because I want to keep this. So what I'm going to do, and it's almost a wine color. It's really a gorgeous color. I want to take that with me because I'm making some smaller landscapes at the beach. I'm actually doing some uh, 16 by 16s too. So Now I'm going to put the trunk in here. And I'm going to take the trunk right out. Get that away from there. I'm going to take the trunk right out of the picture. And you'll notice today that I'm working on the willow frame, which is our laptop frame, and we have them in stock. We have three in stock. Leslie, my neighbor, makes them. Now I'm also going to use this color for the riverbanks. So, and you can see that this is a kind of a, it's a kind of a curly yarn. It's not exactly a boucle. But I'm going to sort of put the river in here because I kind of want it to show on its banks. And this week we got in some new uh, Rasta. I just want you to know that because it goes really fast. So if you were looking at something and it's sold out, you might want to get in there. So the beautiful thing, now if you were in the Tiny Landscapes course last year, you still have access to it this year and you will still have access to the Facebook group, of course. If you haven't taken the, the Tiny Landscapes course, now's your chance to join us. And the Facebook group, we have a Facebook group for this course, so it's an active Facebook group and as of September 14th, it'll become really active again. And uh, we can talk to each other there during the 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 month of the course the, um, you know for September and into early October and now I like these lines that I have drawn here so I'm gonna I'm gonna just draw these lines to sort of create a kind of 
a field because uh, I want to I want a big field back here so I have to think about what can I put in the background here that will work Teresa wants to know is that a solid line or is it spaced it's line? spaced I'd say there's a there's a I skip a skip a loop skip a hole with every one of these I would say so it's not really solid, Teresa. So Tony Landscapes is really a lot about observing the world around you, like, and just t coming back and making, th these are really sketches, I would say. Oh, we should put in the horizon line. Um, these are really just sketches, and what I'm going to do for the horizon line is I'm going to double this up, because I want the horizon line to be a little thicker. Now, is that a rule? No, there isn't, there isn't a rule. So the idea with Tiny Landscapes is that you will take, um, you know, take in something when you're out for a walk or a drive or whatever, and then you'll come home and you'll make this little sketch of it, and, and uh, you'll hook the little sketch. So it's like hooking these little sketches. It's quite fun, really. It really, really is. So I'm going to add some blue clay to that, uh, some blue blue clay to, to this sky over here. We'll see what that looks like. So Angela's brought in a yellow blue clay, which would be great, like if I wanted to use the yellow here as a field, that would be perfect, the yellow blue clay in behind this, it would work. And what's that blue clay called? I better tell you the name of it because you guys get mad if I don't tell you the name. It's our boo, and it's called Fall Crop. We lost Kaylee yesterday. She, she retired. She's gone back to school. <laughs> She's gone back to school to study early childhood education, so good for Kaylee. But we will miss her. She was, she was the namer of a lot of our colors. She was so great. So this boo clay is like, this is our, this is our uh, baby boo. And then we have a thicker boo. So I'm just going to try some of the thicker boo here as the sky, for the sky. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down along the side here. So it's really quite easy to work on your lap. You don't, you don't have to have a shed camp frame or you can, you know, do our double hoop or our hoop or our pine laptops. And you don't, I just don't want people to feel that they always have to have a floor frame because I always work on a floor frame. It's just that that is what I like. So I feel like that's great, but it's a bit heavy. So I'm going to mix in something else with it. I'm going to try this with it. I just don't want it to get, I don't want that sky to get too heavy. So I'm going to give it kind of a cloudy day feeling with this blue and this is a Briggs and this is Briggs and Little um, and I think it's called sky blue or horizon blue maybe mm -hmm. horizon blue isn't it Terry Terry's there now and Terry Terry is my old friend we used to walk together when I was pregnant on McCall remember mm -hmm. Terry I do remember yeah and she started working here she retired from her other job what was your other job Terry I worked at a shelter for abused women you did for a long time. Yeah, a long time, 30 years. I, I think you were there when I was there. You hired I, I hired me. you there. You I know, yeah. I know. I forgot that. And you <laughs> told me that the other day. I could hardly believe it. <laughs> That's right. Now she's retired from that, and I've hired her again. Because I was the director there for like an interim position before I got started having children and started a rug hooking business. So I'm going to keep that blue going. Debbie wants to know if you've ever done a landscape from a photo. Uh, yeah, I have. I don't love to do that, Debbie, because I just really like to have the freedom to choose, you know, to change my mind. Uh, but I bet lots of people here have done landscape from photos, and that would be a really fun thing to see you guys post on Wild with Wool. If you've done, if you have a photo and the rug you've made from that photo, I think that would be really interesting to see. Because there's tons of people who've, who've done it. I like to change. I like to I like to work from my head more. My memory. But that's just me. So it's kind
coming towards the end of August. We're coming into September, like very soon. So let's, let's, I just, do people feel like September is a fresh start? I'm just wondering. Do you feel like you're beginning again? I always do. You I, always yeah, do? Yeah, do yeah, you, Terry? Yeah, even more so than January. Do like you? It. You feel like it's a new beginning? I do. Maybe it's because the school year always said you grow up feeling like it's a new beginning every school year. Every school year, yeah. I still feel like that. Yeah, I think, I feel like that too. I feel like September is a chance to, you know, I kind of recover uh, sort of, I don't know, my sense of home again in September. I want that. I, 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 I'm going to start nesting very soon. Anybody else thinking that? You guys got any comments about that? Carol and Vicky love September. They love September. What do you love about September? What What is it? I wonder. I wonder, do you feel the same things that Terry and I feel? Okay. So this is like a little bit harder to hook. But it's lovely, right? You know, and I, and I always say that like some materials are a little bit more difficult to hook than others, but they're worth it because you get a different look. So now I feel like I want a third blue for this guy. And Terry's pulled this one out. And I like it, but I think it's too much turquoise in it. Now, what's this one called, Angela? That is a Merino Stream, and it is our Merino... Ocean Spray. Ocean Spray, which is a very, very popular color, which I may move down here. I'm just going to go over to my stash, or maybe just grab a piece of wool cloth there. Let's grab that piece of wool cloth. Because in the tiny landscapes, you can just cut your... Well, I'm going to cut that in half because that's just too long. Here we go. I'm going to show you the Iggy Abstract. Just hang in there. A lot of teachers on here saying that September is really... To them, like Terry was saying, it's just like a new beginning. It's their new year. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's true. I think a lot of people I think a lot of people feel that way. I love September. Robin says your sky looks like the past hurricane sky before it broke. Oh goodness, Robin. Really? Oh wow. Yeah, there's an uh, there when you add a blue that has a bit of gray in it, there's a lot of um uh, makes the sky ominous or there's a lot of presence, you know, there's something going on there So let's see what we can do with this if I just use cloth for the rest of this More and more I'm hand cutting my cloth Why is that? Well, I, you know, do you want to know the real truth? You don't want to get up off the chair. That's it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Like I'm in the motion and I'm feeling it and I'm thinking, well, I can just do this myself. I don't need to walk over there to the cutter. Isn't that lazy? But but when you're in the mode and you're I know want to accomplish. Yeah. I can see you not want to stop. That's right. I don't. I don't want to stop. I want to stay at it. I love this blue. I love how the cloth and the boucle and then the thin yarn are all working together to make the sky. How are we doing for time, Angela? We're 20 after. Oh, great. Okay. Can you split the boucle? Uh, no, it's kind of almost, that one is kind of almost sewn together. So I, I don't think you could for that one. Somebody said not lazy, efficient. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll tell you, in... In all, all jokes aside, as my father would say, I don't know why, he, was, he must have been joking a lot, but he was always saying that, all jokes aside. All jokes aside, I think that when you're in the mood and you're in the motion, it's really important to stay there and stay focused. Now, it's important to, to, to rest your hands and to break and all, all of that. We know that, like the physicality of hooking to take care of yourself. But 
if you're in the mood and, you know, if you go check your phone or go do something else, uh, boy, it really, it's sometimes hard to go check your email. It's hard to get back to where you were. So I really do encourage you if you're, if you're focused to just hand cut a little, little wool, like stay, stay there with it. I, I think that when we get there and we get in that motion, it's, it's good to appreciate it and to stay with it. I'm still doing really good on my email, you guys, except for today. I broke my stream a little bit, but mostly I'm checking it three, four times a day, answering it, and uh, have a policy of inbox zero. So if I don't, I get to all of them and, and I leave that inbox empty. And um, just by doing it three or four times a day, I'm not checking it. Remember I told you I used to be checking it all the time? So like if I was sitting and hooking, you know, we train our mind to to be a certain way. What were you gonna say, Terry? C. Crawford is asking, how do we know when we should have our loops all facing the same direction? Well, you don't need your loops all facing the same direction unless you're kind of hooking in a Grenfell style and you really want it. I, I like my loops all going in different directions. So uh, I don't think you need to worry about that personally. Okay. Someone's asking about the gripper on your hook too. Oh yeah, this is just like from the dollar store. It's a pen gripper. And what you do is you grab, get one, split it and just glue it. So that's a good little sky and we got our tree done. So that's about, that's about 15 minutes worth of work. So if I spend another 15, I'd have this done. Probably takes about an hour to make a tiny landscape. In the course, I do them from start to finish. So you see the whole thing and uh, you'll get a really great, you'll get really great lessons complete. Jay wants to know about your scissors, Dan. Uh, those scissors are the Razor's Edge scissors. They're 14, uh, I think they're 14.95 or 16.95 and we have them on the website. Great, great, great scissors. I encourage, I encourage everybody to get a pair of scissors and only cut your wool cloth with them and your wool yarn. Don't cut, don't cut your um, burlap or linen with the same scissors. This is a great yarn too and Angela brought this one in. Uh, for me to show you and it's uh, merino stream red is it merino stream red what's that say Ange? red fox red fox oh of course red fox so we should show them the iggy abstract <laughs> uh, but before let's show them this rug before we do that so this is part of my in between series and i've been talking a lot about in between and the middle and uh, we're going to be talking more about the middle <laughs> and the in-between times as we go along, as I go along with this series. But I was really happy with the way it turned out. I love the trees. I find the house is just a little, a little, a little bit more shallow than I wanted. So I may do something with that. I don't know. I may deepen the outline of the house. Um, I'm just working on it. But I really love this. Love this intricacy in the outlining of the rocks. And I love the sky. So that's, uh, and this doesn't have a name yet. It's just sitting with me and I'm getting used to it and it's getting used to me. But we spent a lot of time together <laughs> so far. So there is uh, just another of the trees. And uh, we haven't named that one yet, but it'll come, it'll come. So let's go out and have a look at the Iggy Abstract. So this is what we got for you today. This is what I drew. So Angela was saying, oh, I think we need like, we need to do something inspired by the animal prints. So what I did was I created an abstract with all kinds of different little prints on it. And then after, you know, I really had a good look at Iggy. And so I created a design sort of based on, on his shape, but not completely. And then sort of this leafy, all the lines, I saw different lines on, on Iggy. And so we have, I don't know how many of these we have, but we have we have enough, don't we, Angela? I Please? think so. Yeah, and we can make a few more if we need to. But that's on the website now, and it's under new patterns, right? It's under patterns, but will soon be under new patterns. Under soon be under new patterns. And it's called the Iggy Abstract, is it? Yeah. Yeah. And to go with that, what Joe has done is he said um, that 
then he wanted to put together a package based on the colors of Iggy. So normally he said we focus on vibrant colors in our rugs. However, one cannot ignore the usage of neutral colors in um, design, whether it be found in minerals, the earth, or our natural environment. Neutrals help help to make your colors burst from your background. Um, and inverse, inversely, by only using neutrals, you can create a calming visualization, um, a, visual, a calming visual uh, piece. So neutrals can be simply uh, some of the easiest to apply into your work. And he said this has 570 grams and it, uh, it includes yarn from Briggs & Little, New Zealand Duo, Creative Smile, Luna, and, and Lana Natural. There are 16 different shades in the package. So um, let's have a look. So we've got all our Briggs & Little shades, and then we've got a hand-dyed cream. We've got, oh my gosh, there's a lot in here. This is, it feels like a sulka to me. Oh, wow. And the, these are big half skeins of Briggs & Little. So there's all our neutrals. And we've done about 20 of these. Oh, this is BB. This is a great yarn. It's thick and thin and it's got nubblies. And oh, that's another Sulka. And this is from our New Zealand Duo collection right here. Um, this, I'm not sure what that, that looks like Luna to me. And this is a, a Creative Smile. And this is a Llama. And this is a Sari, a wrapped Sari. And so let's have a look at that with this pattern. Well, there's way more, uh, there's enough wool here to do a couple of these rugs for sure. But let's have a look at these, at these neutrals and get it all laid out beautifully. And I think it's on the website now, is it? Mm -hmm. It is. Great. I'm gonna... So you can see how, like if it was me right off the bat, I'd want to be taking these dark colors this is what I would do. I would take the dark colors and I would outline. So I would probably take the darkest gray and I'd outline this area and maybe this area. And then I'd probably take the brown and outline this area, you know? And then I'd take the another dark gray and maybe some of this. And I'd use that sort of for my outlining. But you can see how, um, you know, if you outline this in, in the brown, say for example, then you could easily put mix these two tans together as your background, right? And then perhaps put the cream in there. And so each one would be like a different animal print. I'm, I'm just telling you one way to do it. There's a hundred ways to do this rug, right? There really is. And like I could see how you could take this, outline this, say if we outline this in a dark color and then go like this brown bronze there no I'm going lighter like that maybe to this you know and that would be the upper part so you could really have fun but this collection would really give you a good start on your Iggy abstract if you feel like doing an abstract rug now the other thing is is you could hang it like this and it almost has the feeling of a fish too if you look at it you could hang it like this you could hang it like this or you could hang it like that and i love that i suppose you could even hang it like that if you wanted to keep it askew so i'm going to pack this up again so there's our iggy abstract to make this beautiful for somebody so Karen was in yesterday and purchased the Iggy Abstract. Oh, she was. She bought it. And oh. I told her to put it on Wild with Wool because there's a few people on here. Teresa's asking about wanting to see it. Yeah. So I told Karen to make sure she posts she it on posts Wild it. with Great. Wool. Great. Awesome. So this was inspired by talking about Iggy the day after, last Friday. That's when I drew this pattern. Loretta says your dress matches the box. Gosh, it does too, isn't it? I'm, I'm, all, I'm all neutrals, Loretta. But I think that's a really nice package. And it took Joe a long time to make that up. He was, you know what I mean? It takes, takes a lot of effort to put these together. But I think you've got a great, I think that's a great, great package there. So there's the pattern. All righty. 
What else do I want to do today? I want to read that letter. I got a really nice letter from someone on Sunday. You know, on my Sunday letters, if you're not already subscribed, please go to Deanne Fitzpatrick Studio and subscribe. And um, you get all kinds of goodies when you do subscribe. But I, I, every Sunday, I, we send out a letter. And it's usually about... Um, Oh, it's usually about a word, some word. And so last week's was about love. And I'm just going to go get the letter. I'll be right back. Deanne, what's the name of the neutrals box? What's the name of the what? The neutrals box? Yeah. Uh, he's got it written here. Uh, Nature's Neutrals Collection. The Nature's Neutral Collection. We have 20 of those, you guys. We don't have a ton of those, so there's just 20. Um, so this is from Sheila Morgan. And this is what she says to me. Hello, I think you defined love very well, or your mother did by posing the question to you. When we are young, we do put love in, clear, in categories with clear lines. But as we grow, we experience and understand many other kinds of love. We find love in nature too. <laughs> That's cute. For example, or the love of a devoted dog. You have given me pause for thought. I believe that I am hooking, my, hooking rugs not just because my mother did. I am not crafty or domestic at all, but because when I am working on the rug, I feel my mother's love. Just gave me chills when I read this. When I was still at home, mom would be hooking her rag rug, and we would have so many wonderful conversations on every topic imaginable, from politics to love, from ranching to Broadway. She would usually have two or three on the go at once, and she always had something or usually someone in mind for them. A grandchild, a neighbor's old dog. I love that she was making a rug for the neighbor's old dog. Like, that's great. A tent trailer mat, a mat for the trunk of my brother's car. Isn't that great? This was her expression of relaxation and love. I can hardly describe the warmth I feel working on a rug and remembering her. This is love. And that was a letter from Sheila Morgan. And I think she's right that um, love is about a lot of things. And love is about rug hooking too, right? And it's about sharing rug hooking. We've talked about that many times on Thursday Live, about the importance of sharing your, you know, making sure that you have an extra hook in the house, making sure that you have an extra piece of burlap so that you can show someone how to do it and sharing that, sharing this video. Please share the videos. I, I really appreciate it because when you share rug hooking you just don't know what you're sharing you you know this Sheila really is saying that when you share rug hooking you're sharing love really and I I think that's a really beautiful letter Sheila and I'm going to keep it because it I feel connected to things and people too when I hook and um uh, you know, I often say I've sat down at the mat angry and pissed off and I've gotten off just relaxed and happy. Like, you know, it's really is a soothing, beautiful craft. And and uh, I've sat down confused and gotten up not no longer confused, you know, so sorted. It's it's a way of us sorting things out. But it is also making is a way of showing love to other people. And this, this whole thing about making a mat for the neighbor's old dog or for the tent trailer or a mat for the trunk of my brother's car. Mm. That's beautiful. Really, that's beautiful. So thank you, Sheila. And I do read your notes, you guys. I know some of you think that I don't read the emails, but I do. I read the emails. I know everything that's going on here pretty much, don't I, Terry? She does. Ah, <laughs> what about you, Angela? Do I know everything? Maybe not everything. Pretty much, though. Pretty much. Except that one secret, Angela. That one <laughs> secret. Oh, I'm going to find that out right after this. <laughs> anyway, Is thank there, Just one more question. Yeah, sure. Would there be a color legend for Iggy? Uh, no, there is not a color legend for Iggy because... Well, I like the idea of Iggy and legend because Iggy is a bit of a legend because I never, <laughs> I never thought like I'd warm up to a dragon like that or a lizard, you know, but he's not a lizard though, is he? Is it wrong is. to call him a lizard? He is no. a kind of a lizard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, there is not a color legend, but like I said, either when you have a piece like this, you're going to start dark, you're going to outline dark and go light, or you're going to outline light and go dark, right? You don't really, that you know, oh, now you could... That's one way of doing it. <laughs> uh, there are always others. You could do textural. So like you could outline in this and fill in in this. And then there'd be a textural contrast too. 
Uh, but no, I don't have a legend because there are, there are infinite opportunities in this design. Like all of this could be hit and miss, right? See that? Look at that. Couldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. So you outline all of that, you outline it all in white or brown or gray, and then you just fill it in in different stripes. Like you just, you could do the same thing with the diamonds over here. I might hook it. I'm actually, I'm going to hook it too. You're going to hook it too? Yeah. And I actually put the photo of you and Iggy on the website underneath oh. the pattern. So if oh. they want a reference, there is oh. a picture of them there. There is a picture of Iggy there. But you can, you can use any, like you can use like this to me is a walk. Like I, when I look down on that, like if I was to step in that, you know, put my feet in that, to me, it looks like the forest floor too. Right? Really does. Anyway. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I've got company coming on the weekend. My old friend who I haven't seen in ages. And uh, she's coming. Uh, she's my friend from high school. She's coming to visit. So, and her husband. And we're just going to hang out all weekend and enjoy ourselves. And my niece Bridget is here. Who's the reason I'm in Nova Scotia. I moved here to be with her when she was a baby. And I was 16 years old. And so she's here visiting. So it's nice to have company again. It's really lovely to have people around. I'll see ya. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for reading the Sunday letters. And Angela's uh, digging up some stuff, and we're going to, I've sent her some podcasts, and she's reviewing them and deciding if they're good enough. <laughs> 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 so we're going to start our podcast again in the fall, so you'll have something to listen to while you're hooking. I do want to tell you, though, that the book that we posted last weekend uh, that was so good, The Stars, I forget what it was. It the, did, I, did I give you the Paul, Paula McLean book, the Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the one I got starts. lost in. It was so good. And lately, I've been I've joined Libby, which is uh, your live like your local library. You can get um, you can get free downloadable books, uh, like audio books. And right now, I like I still have this guy talking. Uh, he's reading me a John Grisham novel. So whenever I'm alone, even if that's not on, it's like he's talking in my head because it's like twenty hours long. But Libby uh, from your library, your local library has uh, options for you to, to have downloadable books so you can learn while you're hooking. Or you can, lately I just didn't want to learn anything. I just wanted to be, uh, wanted to be entertained. <laughs> so I'm going to listen to this novel. And it's been great. So just a thought for you. When the stars hooking. go dark. When the stars go dark. It was, it was a beautiful book. Loved it. Thank you, Kathy. Paul, uh, Paula McLean, I think, wrote it. Anyway, we'll see you. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.